That's a lot of woman you got there. She's gonna want more than you can offer living in a bunkhouse. Rodeo was supposed to be my way out of the bunkhouse. <laughs> Rodeo's as bad on relationships as cowboy. You can't be married to two things at the same time, Jimmy. That right there is the man, the myth, the legend, Forey Smith. Forey, are you with us? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, a, a lot of a lot of actors play cowboys, but then sometimes you get cowboys to play cowboys, and that and that right there is Forey Smith, Lloyd on Yellowstone. So what are you up yeah, to today? Thank you. I got a little thank <laughs> Taylor was telling me about what he's going to do with me on in season four. And I just laughed at him. I said, oh, hell, you already made me a buckle bunny. You can't do much worse than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, last time we visited with you, I guess, was right when season two was kicking off. And uh, yeah. you, you had a you had a pretty good part there. But as things changed, you become more, you know, more of a focus on the show. So how has things kind of changed for you? You know, after season three's wrapped up, season four is getting ready to come up. So how has things changed, you know, in your world, um, moving on up in season three? Um, well, season four, uh, there you uh, Kind of the subplots about Lloyd. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that was a whole different experience with the, COVID and having to stay in the bubble, never getting around to other people and stuff. I never really, it took me a couple of weeks to lose old Lloyd when I got home, <laughs> maybe longer than that. <laughs> um, so it, that, that's one change, you know, uh, the more you work and the, the, um, and the more you are that character, uh, the harder it is to shed him and uh, think like four or you like yourself um, and you know you got well Heath Ledger and you know you go on down the list people that have had trouble getting away from their characters yeah yeah you get you get set it you know set in there and then you gotta kind of decompress and go back and go wait a minute that's just that's just the tv I got I get back to myself yeah I can't get away with that <laughs> No. Well, now the, you know, the, the bunkhouse is becoming more, you know, more and more in the show and it's starting to fill up. So, you know, what, what do you think that has to do with the show? Well, um, the bunkhouse has always been, uh, kind of the comic relief of the show. And, uh, it's always been a favorite people's favorites. Um, and, it's uh, it's uh, hard to answer that without giving anything away for season <laughs> four. Uh, all right, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I want. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'd be in trouble. But oh uh, yeah, there's some changes coming in the bunkhouse. Uh oh, That's even not... more so than already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it it, so. it had a few changes in season three. Yeah, it kind of mixing it up a little bit in there. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I, that's what I told everybody um, in the promos before season three was like, well, after season three, every cowboy in the world's going to want to move into the Yellowstone bunkhouse. Oh, so. <laughs> and uh, now they know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now in, in, you know, in the last season, we had a bit more, a little more rodeo action. You know, we had Jimmy with the, with the bronc riding and stuff. So did you have any any influence on that in the season as far as adding adding the bronc riding in the show? Well, um, my heritage and my history, Taylor, you know, kind of played on that. And uh, he uh, he asked me about the dialogue and, and uh, what we'd do. And we didn't do it quite like I – would have had done it, but uh, I'm not as hep on uh, time constraints and the budget and everything as Taylor is. And, and uh, we, you know, yeah, he used some of my dialogue and, um, you know, kind of picked my brain about that stuff. 
Now, I heard that uh, you're starting to use your own horses now. No. No? No. I have horses here at home that uh, I use on movies. But, uh, no, um, I'm not, not on that show yet, anyway. Okay. Um, I like, uh, I don't have a buckskin anymore. And I, um, people probably don't realize that um, I ride a buckskin because of Matt Dillon. I like Matt Dillon. I've worked with James Arnez a few different times, and he's just a straight up gentleman, good man. And uh, so I, uh, Taylor asked me what I wanted to ride on the show. I told him I wanted to ride a buckskin. And, um, and then, uh, you won't find me wearing black gloves out here on a day like today, but I wear black gloves on the show in honor of the Virginian. I, okay. I really like the Virginian. I liked a lot of his, uh, I used some of his stuff um, in, in interviews. Uh, I did an interview on the Cowboy Channel at the National Finals in Fort Worth. And, oh, I see if I can say it right. I got it right that day. Uh, if you see something that's wrong and you don't do something about it, then you're part of it. Right. And and that, that comes from uh, James Dury, the Virginian. And uh, so I'm going to continue riding the buckskin. Uh, uh, that little Cisco horse, of Jake Reams, is a really nice horse and it's really coming along. I don't see any reason in changing, but um, I have special horses that I use on the movies. And then I have, I've got uh, Ken Head here at the house, and I've got two of them. Nobody straddled them but me, and my, my well, my son rode the one too. But they're my horses. I pick up on them. I catch wild cattle on them. They're getting some age on them, the old gray marshes. But uh, and then I've got. Um, some others that I'll use on movies, but you never know what they might ask you to do on a horse, you know. Right. And, uh, um, and once you rent them out, there's there's their horse, and uh, if they want you to jump them off a cliff, that's what you got to do. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that with some of mine. Yeah. Now I know a lot of uh, a lot of us been in the war in the uh, in the news about some of these Yellowstone uh, spinoffs. There's a couple of them. They're, they're talking about something going on at the four sixes and they're talking about a, uh, like a prequel to Yellowstone. So as, as Taylor mentioned uh, to working with you on any of that, rather either uh, being in it or, or consulting for the, for the cowboy stuff in those shows. Not as of yet. He hasn't. No. Um, uh, we did set up the prequel in season four. Oh, I don't know if I should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then, and, and the four six is, uh, I guess it's been on the it, social media and everything that, uh, Jimmy and Walker are going to the four sixes. So, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't do that. I have a social media coordinator. She takes care of my social media stuff for me. I, I don't. I don't know nothing about it. I, um. So I just show up and do my job. Yeah. Cowboy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all. You, that's all you can do. Now we had, uh, you know, we had a couple of uh, fan submitted questions for you kind of about the show. So let me, uh, let me turn this over to Holly. She's got a couple of questions that were submitted by Yellowphone, Yellowstone fans of uh -huh. Lloyd. Thank you, Yellowstone fans. <laughs> the first question for you is, will we get any throwback scenes of a young Lloyd? Well, <laughs> not, not, not that I know of right now. Um, we're hoping so. You know, my son's always asking me, well, Dad, you read the scripts yet? What, what do I have on them? Um, Taylor, Taylor likes my son, and uh, 
So we're hoping so, yeah. Um, and after season four, what he did to me in season four, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't some more flashbacks. All right. Great. At some point, will the backstory show how your character Lloyd become a Brandon man? Well, we've been asked that for years, and uh, Taylor Sheridan's the only one that knows. Um, he, has, he hasn't told me, shared that with me, but uh, we've talked about several different scenarios, so it is on his mind. Fair enough. Can't wait, to, can't wait for that. <laughs> Me neither. I'm kind of anxious <laughs> too. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Four. Uh, it's established in season four that I've been there for 35 years and uh, stuff. So I think he might be kind of progressing towards that. So may maybe sneaking into that coming up coming up maybe season five we'll we'll get the we we'll get the lowdown on it. Now. Uh, yeah. Now Taylor brings some folks out because we do uh, we do some media stuff for the Carity Foundation here in Fort Worth, and they have the uh, the cutting every year. Is is there any chance? Oh, are you coming down and doing some cutting? No, I haven't been asked to yet. Um, I haven't been on a cutting horse since. Uh, well, I used to ride colts for the Carters in Crockett, Texas, and uh, I got to turn back for them some, uh, but. Uh, no, I haven't. I'm coming out uh, for the Cowboys and Cowboys Gala in Dallas at Gillies on the 24th. I know that. Okay. Um, they got me hopping here for the next couple months. They, you know, it's hard to say no to these fans. They don't watch. I don't have. We don't have a job. Right. Uh, and uh, let's see. I'm clear this weekend, and then next weekend I go to speak to the kids on the res Navajo reservation. And, uh, and then the next weekend after that, the 17th, I'm doing a charity for the firemen here in uh, New Mexico. And then I go to the Cowboys and Cowboys Gala. And then I've been lucky enough to get to, uh, Mike Smith and Bob Baffert are going to take me to the uh, Kentucky Derby. Well, that'll wow. be good. And then after, after that, they're flying me to Medora or Dickinson, North Dakota, and I'll have to drive to Medora for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. I'm a guest speaker there. And then uh, the... Wednesday, I think, or Thursday after that, I go to Watford City to Cattleman's Banquet, North Dakota. And then uh, I'm a, kind of a host or I don't know what at the Miles City Bucking Horse Sale. All right. So there's going to be plenty plenty opportunity for these Yellowstone fans across the U.S. to, to run into you somewhere coming up the next somewhere. few months. That's going to be fun. I I went to the Miles City Bucking Horse Sale when I lived in Montana four or five years in a row. And uh, I got a lot of cool memories to share with people from up there. <laughs> and then some not so, you know. I, <laughs> but uh, the first, um, <laughs> first time I ever seen a stripper was at the Miles City Bucking Horse Sale. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see up there. No, you don't. You sure don't. Oh. They caught my guys in high school. Caught me by surprise. <laughs> and, Whoa, what's that girl doing up there? She's stripping. Oh. Working her way through college. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, so. oh man. All right, Forey. Well, man, we got to, we're running up on the clock. They're looking at me. So we appreciate you visiting with oh. us again and, and letting you know what you got going on and about – about Yellowstone, and I guess all we can do is tune in to uh, the next season and see what happens. That's right. I'm ready, too. And, uh, once they start showing, then we go back to work, so I get excited about when it shows. We go back to work in July. So. All right. We'll see you then. 
Hey, well, thank you guys, and keep up the good work in promoting the farm and ranchers. And before we leave, I want to thank all you farm and ranchers out there for feeding America. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Pepper. Thank you, sir. Thank you.